Yes, it's been another crazy week as the world continues its spiral down the rabbit hole. Let's take a look at some of the top news stories of the last week. A couple quick notes before we begin. Last week, I shared a two-part series on the history of the U.S.-North Korea relationship. This week is a bit different, focusing on the headlines of the week. Please let me know which format you'd like to see more of in the future. The features like last week, or the headlines like today. Hopefully, you enjoyed at least one of them. As a side note, if you've seen the first part of the Korea series, I apologize again for the technical glitches in that video. I am still learning, and I think each of the videos I've done since have shown improvement, so I hope you'll keep watching. So, let's get to the headlines. Donald Trump gave a major speech on Monday, the 21st of August, about his strategy for Afghanistan. His speech has been praised by some on the right as a bold step forward, but it has been noted that it was lacking in details or a clear vision for an exit strategy. Overall, he's backpedaled on his campaign promise to get the troops out of Afghanistan and is instead sending more in. Many are seeing this as a failure to learn from the lessons of the past. Lessons that have been learned by many countries and that the U.S. really should have learned from by now. As part of this speech, he launched into a tirade against Pakistan, which can only serve to damage the relationships between the U.S. and that country. He did, however, create a brilliant opportunity for China to step in and rhetorically defend Pakistan. So if that was his goal, well done. All in all, we can only hope that Trump's actions and decisions turn out better than any other action or decision so far in his presidency. Or that he is, at least, learning that it was easier to sit on the sidelines and criticize President Obama from afar and have to be a leader himself. Unfortunately, I don't think he has the capacity either to lead or to learn from his past mistakes. So, yeah, Trump was praised by some, mainly on the Republican side, for his speech on Monday. Unfortunately, on Tuesday, he delivered one of his campaign-style rallies. Well, rally may not be the right word. Rant probably fits better. For over an hour, he made attempts to prop up his own ego with inaccuracies and half-truths, as well, of course, as attacks on his perceived enemies. As a result, this week has seen an increase in people speculating about Trump's mental health and his fitness for office. World leaders are increasingly willing, on the record, to express their concerns about the American president. Trump, of course, continues to proclaim that he will build his silly wall. The only wall that Trump is building right now appears to be the one between himself and the rest of the Republican Party. His attacks on the leaders in Congress from his own party have allegedly raised some off-the-record concerns. But even more dramatically, the number of Republicans raising concerns publicly is still a trickle, but it is increasing. Everyone from Susan Collins, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, Ben Sass, Bob Corker, and others. Arizona's junior senator, Jeff Flake, a Republican, but also a frequent critic of Trump on policy, to which, of course, Trump responds with personal attacks, has gone so far as to suggest that the divisions that Trump is creating within the Republican Party will lead to a primary challenge in 2020, assuming, of course, that Trump is still president in 2020. Moving on. Just when you thought the tensions between the U.S. and North Korea over missile tests were calming down, various news outlets are now reporting that North Korea is developing an even more advanced missile. This new missile allegedly uses a solid fuel instead of liquid. Solid fuel offers several military advantages. First, a liquid rocket needs to be filled right before it takes off, where a solid fuel rocket is ready to go. Because of this, solid fuel missile launches are harder to detect before they're in the air. They are easier to move and easier to hide. While this has been staged by North Korea as an accidental leak, it seems unlikely. These images are almost certainly intended as a bit of saber rattling by Pyongyang and assigned to Trump and the rest of the world that they don't intend to back down or blink in the face of Trump's threats. Moving on to the UK this time. Over the last week or so, Prime Minister Theresa May's government has released a number of position papers on Brexit, the process of separating the UK from the European Union. On the one hand, these position papers are reflecting the fact that the Prime Minister's no deal is better than a bad deal rhetoric and bluff was called, and she lost. 
or misguided snap election where she accused labor of needing a magic money tree to fund their programs backfired. And instead of gaining seats, she lost them. Which led to the regrettable deal she has made with the Democratic Unionist Party of Northern Ireland. Requiring a billion pound payout from her own magic money tree just to keep herself in number 10 Downing Street. These position papers are also stirring up new criticisms of the Prime Minister from within her own party, particularly about what role, if any, the European Court of Justice will have post Brexit, this being a key topic for Eurosceptics. She is seeing increasing revolts within her party, both from the front bench and the back. In fact, her own Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson, recently made some rather pointed jokes at her expense, accidentally on Mike. And all this drama has just been compounded by new research which calls into questions data that Theresa May has been using to justify her policies since she was Home Secretary, regarding the number of foreign students who overstay their visas in the country. Under Mrs. May, the Home Office was claiming as many as 100,000 students were overstaying their visas, while this new research shows that it's less than 5,000. Again, even her own party, the Tories, are abandoning her over her pledge to continue with the policies that she made based on this bad data. Former Chancellor George Osborne, admittedly no friend of Theresa May, and again her Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, widely believed to want her job, are just a few of those snapping at the Prime Minister's heels. Getting the news yesterday, Friday the 25th of August, former Thailand Prime Minister Yinlak Chinawat was reported to have fled the country. The disgraced leader was removed from office and arrested in 2014. She was expected in court yesterday to finally hear the verdict from her trial, but she failed to appear. The government did step up border checks and other precautions to prevent her from leaving the country, but reports last night were claiming that she admitted to Dubai, Saudi Arabia. In a bit of strange news, like something straight out of the Cold War, there are reports that 16 people at the U.S. Embassy in Havana, Cuba, are reporting hearing loss and other symptoms that may be linked to a covert sonic device. Whether this is some weapon targeted at the embassy, some sort of spy technology that's gone on the blink, or for some other reason, is not yet known. All we know so far is that authorities are linking these symptoms with a series of undefined and unspecified incidents that started late last year. In addition to the hearing loss, other symptoms reported range from headaches and nausea up to damage to the central nervous system. At least one Canadian diplomat is also reporting hearing loss, but it's not yet clear if that's directly related. Cuban authorities are, apparently, assisting with this investigation. Next, Hurricane Harvey made landfall in Texas last night. At the point when the hurricane reached the Texas coast, it was a Category 4 storm with wind speeds of up to 130 miles an hour, and the worst hurricane to hit the U.S. mainland in over 10 years. Even before Harvey was upgraded to a Category 4 storm, Experts were predicting up to 40 inches of rain in some areas. That's over a meter. Hopefully, seeing the magnitude of this disaster will convince Trump to reconsider his proposal to get the budget of FEMA, the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency. But since we have a president who cannot admit his mistakes, let alone learn from them, unfortunately, that doesn't seem likely. My thoughts, of course, are with everyone affected by this storm. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier in the week, this is Pride Weekend in Manchester, England, where I live. So again, please have a safe and fun Pride. And don't forget, amidst all the noise, the hoopla, the festivals, and the parades, to remember what this is really about. This is a chance for us to remember how far our community has come and how far we have yet to go. A chance for us to deliver a message of hope to every person, young or old, who is still trapped in the closet. And let them know that they are not alone. A chance for our community to really and truly be a community, to come together and support each other. And that's the week that was. If you enjoyed this video, found it interesting or informative, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. As a final programming note, over the next week or so, I'm going to have a series of videos following on from this last Monday's Life and Times I Should Have Known. This starts on Monday, with the Life and Times segment when you least expect it. And then, on Wednesday, the musing segment, Lessons Learned. Friday, of course, is our news and current events day, and don't forget to tell me in the comments which format you prefer, headlines like today, or the feature format like we did last time. And then, the following Monday, the 4th of September, the Life and Time segment will continue on from when you least expect it. Thanks for watching, and remember, be good. And if you can't be good, 
be wicked well.